Good morning. It's Wednesday the 8th of April 2020. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the Senior Pastor of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Welcome to Morning Prayer this morning. Good to join you and uh, I trust that uh, just as here in Northampton, wherever you are today, the sun is shining and you are looking forward to whatever the day may bring. We're journeying through Holy Week at the moment and obviously uh, it's very different at the moment but I want to encourage you, if you're able, to make part of the rhythm of your week. Uh, joining us at 12 noon when we shall be uh, sharing again in a midday devotional and at 9pm tonight for prayer. And then tomorrow on Monday, Thursday, in addition to morning and evening prayer and the midday devotional at 7pm tomorrow, there will be a brief service of Holy Communion, which you can share in as we remember the sacrifice of Christ for us and his death upon the cross, uh, which is uh, at the centre of our faith. So, as we meet this morning, let me invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray together. Psalm 77 I cry aloud to the Lord, aloud to God, that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favourable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the water saw you, O God, when the water saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. A psalm that reminds us in the midst of our trouble to recall what God has done. A psalm that reminds us that even though now we may be feeling that we are at our wit's end and we feel that there's no one around us, the same God who has saved us in the past will save us now and always. So I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that, with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. God of mercy, God of love, in humbleness of heart we confess our sins. 
we forget to love and serve you and we wander from your ways. We are careless of your world and put its life in danger. We talk of our concern for others but fail to match our words with action. May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 12, beginning to read at the 14th verse. Pursue peace with everyone and the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and through it may become defiled. See to it that no one becomes like Esau, an immoral and godless person who sold his birthright for a single meal. You know that later, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, even though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and the tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice whose words make the hearers beg that not another word could be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. Thanks be to God for his word. Some of you will know, and so this is very much a word in context, that today is Judith and my wedding anniversary. And thank you to those of you who greeted us already today. There's one thing that, if you know us, marks us out as being very different. And that is our approach to shopping. <laughs> you may be surprised to know that I don't mind shopping too much. Um, but I have a very direct and a very simple approach. If you're going to buy a present for somebody and you see something that fits the bill, that fits the budget, is suitable and available, you buy it. I won't tell you what Mrs Lavender's approach is, but let's just say it involves multiple choices. Here's my point without being too flippant, or indeed uh, stirring up marital disquiets today. If we are given an opportunity, take it. In our words of confession, in our prayers of confession, in uh, our reading this morning, we're told not to miss out, not to 
fail to take the opportunity that God gives us. In our prayer of confession, we ask for time to amend our lives. Here in our reading this morning, we read of uh, Esau who missed the opportunity to repent. We're encouraged to see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. In Psalm 95, we're encouraged, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Make the most of every opportunity. We're told elsewhere in Scripture as well. Take the opportunity. Don't miss out. So just as if you see a present and you want to buy it and you don't want to miss that opportunity, then don't. But today, if you know that there's something that you must do, don't miss out. Take the opportunity. If today you need to say sorry to somebody, say sorry. Today, if you need to pray about something, bring it to God. The old hymn puts it, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Don't miss out. The opportunity may not pass you by again. So today, as we've already prayed that God will give us time to amend our lives, may he also grant us the grace of time to obey his will. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, you are the Lord of all that is good in life. Your strong and loving hands hold us, and you call us to be fellow workers with you in the issues of life and death. This morning we bring to you those who are in distress of body or mind and we pray that you would show us how to cooperate with you to bring health to people in great need. We pray that you would reveal to scientists new avenues in medical research and grant faith to pursue fresh insights so that dedicated knowledge and consecrated love may be used by you in healing and consoling work. We particularly pray for those who are seeking cures and all preventative measures to deal with the COVID-19 coronavirus. And Lord, when we grope in darkness and cannot help, when your children suffer and those who love can only look on, save both, we pray, from rebellion and unbelief. Show us that for those who trust you, no distress is in vain, that all things find their place in your purposes at last. And so we ask for them patience and endurance and a quiet mind until pain vanishes or is made plain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayer of St Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is sadness, joy, where there is darkness, light. O Divine Master, let us seek not so much to be comforted as to comfort, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is only in giving that we receive, in forgetting ourselves that we find, in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we rise to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We share together in saying the Lord's Prayer, in the language or form which is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. So may the Lord guide you and restore his comfort to you. The Lord bring praise to your lips. The Lord send peace wherever you go. The Lord in his mercy heal you. And the blessing of God Almighty. 
the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for prayer this morning. Look forward to praying with you this evening at nine o'clock and sharing with you at lunchtime today at 12 noon with our midday devotion. And a reminder that tomorrow at 7 p.m. fitted into the normal routine, there'll be a service of Holy Communion. And on Good Friday afternoon at three, there will be a special uh, time here uh, when we will meet as it were at the foot of the cross and share together in Bible readings and prayers together. May God bless you today. Please keep well, please keep safe and look forward to being with you again. Goodbye.